Nearly three and one half million jobs require workers to service equipment that puts them at great risk of injury if lockout tagout is not properly implemented. Lockout tagout refers to specific practices and procedures to safeguard employees from the unexpected energization or startup of machinery and equipment or the release of hazardous energy during service or maintenance activities. Compliance with the lockout tagout standard is estimated to prevent 120 fatalities and 50,000 injuries each year. The lockout tagout standard applies to all employees who work with or are around machines that may need to be serviced or maintained. The overview of this instructional video will cover what lockout tagout is, training of lockout tagout procedures, standards for locks and tags, proper procedures for lockout tagout, and procedures for special lockout tagout occasions such as with outside contractors, group lockout tagout, and shift or personnel changes. Lockout tagout is a set of safety procedures designed to reduce the risk of injury due to accidental activation of machinery or energizing of electrical systems during servicing or maintenance. It is addressed by OSHA under the standard 29 CFR 1910.147, the control of hazardous energy. Lockout tagout is required to ensure that before any employee performs any servicing or maintenance on a machine or equipment where the unexpected energizing, startup, or release of stored energy could occur and cause injury, the machine or equipment shall be isolated from the energy source and rendered inoperative. OSHA estimates that the lockout tagout standard protects an average of 3.3 million employees each year at 1 million firms and that it has reduced fatalities from unexpected activation of machinery at facilities in the automobile and steelmaking industries by 20 to 55 percent in the years since promulgation. All employers should make written procedures available. The procedures should clearly outline the scope, purpose, authorization, rules, and techniques to be utilized for the lockout tagout process. Procedures should include the following a specific statement of the intended use of the procedure written specific steps for isolating, blocking, and shutting down the machine or equipment, specific procedural steps for the placement, removal, and transfer of lockout tagout devices and the responsibility for them, and specific requirements for testing a machine or equipment to determine the effectiveness of the lockout device, tagout device, and other energy control measures. Employers should provide special training for employees to assure control of hazardous energy in the workplace. OSHA identifies three types of employees and the training they should receive. Authorized employees are trained to know how machines are powered and the procedures necessary to lock out or tag out the machine or equipment. Authorized employees must know how to recognize hazardous energy sources and what type and amount of energy they contain. They must also know how to isolate and control that energy source to prevent accidents. Only an authorized employee is allowed to disconnect the equipment being serviced or maintained from the power source or sources using either lockout, tagout, or both methods. An employee whose job requires him or her to operate or use a machine or equipment on which servicing or maintenance is being performed under lockout or tagout or whose job requires him or her to work in an area in which servicing or maintenance is being performed is called an affected employee. They must know the purpose and procedures for energy control to fully understand the importance of not using a machine that is locked out or tagged out. 
An affected employee becomes an authorized employee when that employee's duties include performing service or maintenance covered under this standard. Employees who work in areas where the energy control procedures are used but are not a part of the process are termed other employees. It is important for them to understand lockout tagout rules and to not attempt to re-energize machines that are locked out or tagged out. They also need to learn the limitations of the tag out devices. It is important that all employees follow the central rule. No one should ever try to start equipment that is locked out or tagged out. Employees should be retrained when their job assignments change, the machines change, equipment or process creates new hazards, and when energy control procedures change. An employee is also required to be retrained if during an inspection he or she doesn't appear to follow or fully understand the procedure. Inspection of the lockout tagout energy control procedure by the employer is required at least once a year. The person conducting the inspection must not be involved in using the specific energy control procedures that are being inspected. During the inspection, the employer or authorized employee checks to see if all employees are following the lockout tagout procedure. The inspector reviews lockout responsibilities with all authorized employees. Inspections help find and correct problems and keep employees safe. Inspection documentation should identify the machine on which the energy control procedure was inspected, the date of the inspection, employees included in the inspection, and the person performing the inspection. The locks used for a lockout procedure must meet certain criteria. The locks can either be keyed or combination. Locks cannot be used for any other purpose. The locks must be durable enough for the heat, cold, humidity, or corrosiveness of the environment in which they will be used. Every lock used for the lockout procedure must be standardized within the facility in at least one of the following criteria, color, size, or shape. Locks must be strong enough that they cannot be removed without heavy force or tools like bolt cutters. Each lock must identify the name of the employee who installs it. The tags for a tag-out procedure must meet similar requirements. Each tag must have the same print and format throughout the facility. The tags must be easy to read and understand, even if used in corrosive, dirty, or damp areas. Tags must be tough enough that they cannot be removed easily. A nylon cable must be used to attach each tag. The cable cannot be reusable. It must be able to be attached by hand. The cable must be self-locking, and it must be able to withstand 50 pounds of pressure before release. Tags don't lock out energy, but only warn of the dangers. Tag-out devices should include a legend such as do not start, do not open, do not close, do not energize, and do not operate. The installer's name must be located on the front of the tag. Before the authorized or affected employee shuts down the machine or equipment, the authorized employee needs to know the type and amount of energy, the hazards of the energy, and the method and means to control it. The machine will then be shut down according to the procedures required by the manufacturer. An orderly shutdown must be used to avoid increased hazards to employees as a result of incorrect shutdown. All energy the machine utilizes will then be located and isolated from their sources. The lockout tagout device can then be placed on the energy isolation device by the authorized employee. The lockout device should lock the energy isolation device in the safe or off position. If the isolation device is not capable of being locked out, then the use of a tag is required. The tag should be placed as close as safely possible to the device, so it will be immediately obvious to anyone trying to activate the machine or equipment. Tag-out devices are also permissible when the employer can safely prove that the tag-out device will provide employee protection equal to the lockout device. 
the tag must be placed at the same point the lockout device would have been attached. The tagout device must clearly prohibit anyone from activation of the machine or equipment. Stored energy must be released, disconnected, restrained, and rendered safe. These energy sources include electrical, pneumatic, hydraulic, mechanical, thermal, chemical, and the force of gravity. Before starting work on the machine that has been locked out or tagged out, the authorized employee should verify that the isolation of the machine or equipment has been achieved. Before any locks and tags can be removed from isolation devices, the authorized employee must follow procedures set forth by OSHA. The authorized employee must make sure that tools are removed from the machine or equipment and all components are operational. All employees should be at a safe distance from the machine or equipment. Each lockout tagout device should be removed by the employee who applied the device. If the employee who applied the lockout tagout device is not present, the device can be removed under the direction of the employer. The procedure to follow in the case of an absent authorized employee is as follows. The employer needs to verify that the employee is absent from the facility. Reasonable efforts to contact the employee about the lockout tagout removal needs to be made. And the absent employee will need to be informed that their lockout tagout device was removed before they return to work. Sometimes lockout tagout devices are required to be removed so that the machine can be tested or positioned. The following sequence of actions should be followed. Clear the machine of any tools and materials used. Make sure there are no other employees in the machine or equipment area. Remove the lockout tagout devices from the energy isolation devices. Energize and proceed with testing or positioning. Deactivate all systems and reapply energy control procedures as required by the lockout tagout procedures. From time to time, employers will hire outside contractors to service the machine or equipment. The on-site employer and outside employer need to inform each other of the respected lockout tagout procedures. The on-site employer then needs to make sure his or her employees understand and comply with the restrictions of the outside employer's energy control program. In some instances, an entire crew or group will be responsible for lockout tagout of machines or equipment. One member of the crew needs to be appointed with the primary responsibility for the crew and for keeping all members of the crew safe during lockout. Each authorized employee must place their lockout tagout device on the group lockout device or lockbox when they begin work and remove it when they stop work on the machine. When shift or personnel changes carry through from one shift to another, there must be continuity of protection for off-going employees and oncoming employees. The employees must follow shift change procedures set by the employer. The lockout tagout procedures are a method of keeping equipment from being activated and endangering workers. Be sure to follow the six-step procedure for hazardous energy control. Preparation for shutdown, Equipment shutdown, machine or equipment isolation, application of lockout tagout device, release stored energy, and verification of isolation. Follow closely the steps for removing locks and tags. Clean out any tools or materials in the machine. Make sure all employees are at a safe distance away and notify all affected employees that the machine is being activated. Lockout tagout saves lives and prevents injuries if procedures are followed correctly. Never take shortcuts when it comes to the safety of yourself and others, especially when working with hazardous energy sources. The standard can only work if it's used correctly every time.